So welcome back. So the first part of today's lecture has been really kind of looking at a linear transformation at a vector space level and then bumping it down to a question about looking at R maps between Rn and Rm. Now what we want to do is kind of look at where does the connection with diagonal matrices come from? Okay, so when we're going to be looking at diagonal diagonalization, we're going to be looking at kind of a special case of what we've just been looking at. So here's the setup. Suppose that we know that our matrix A can be diagonalized. So we know that P is a matrix that's invertible and D is a diagonal matrix whose entries are the eigenvalues. And not, not only that, we know something else here, right? The matrix P is invertible with columns that are eigenvectors and they have to be linearly independent because the matrix is invertible. So that means that because they're linearly independent and they, we have n element, we know that B1 up to Bn is a basis for Rn, okay? And so this is called an eigenvector basis of Rn. So we've picked a basis of Rn using eigenvectors from some particular matrix. Okay, so now what we want to do is take what we've done before and specialize it to, to the following case. So before V and W could have been different vector spaces, but now we're saying, okay, let V and W both be equal to Rn. And we're not going to have two different bases. We're not going to have a basis for V and a different basis for W. We're going to use the same basis. And actually what we're going to use is we're going to use the eigenvector basis from your matrix A. So you have to imagine the matrix A is fixed at the beginning and you've already found the diagonalization. So let's say that you're now looking at the linear transformation given by multiplying by A. Right? So normally the way we would have thought about this is we have an Rn, because we have a square matrix, we're going to Rn and we're taking a vector x and we're mapping it over to Ax. But you can think of what we did here, if we go back to my picture over here, as the top picture over here. So this is an Rn and this is an Rn. And so you could do the same trick. You can still bump it down. Even though we have an Rn here, there's no reason why we can't push it into Rn, but using our basis, our new basis element B, or our, our relative to our basis B in the B coordinates. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to take our X here, and we're going to map it downstairs to the B coordinates of X, uh, where the B is coming from the eigenvectors. And then at the same time, we're going to take Ax over here and map it down to its B coordinates with respect to the basis B. And so we know that there's a, mate, um, there's a map M that allows you to take this vector and map it over to this vector, right? So this is the, the linear transformation or the matrix M relative to bases B and B, because the matrices, are, both bases, both our vector spaces that we're looking at have the same basis. So this guy exists from what we've known over here. So there's a matrix M that allows us to go from here to here. And so what exactly is this matrix M? Well, this is kind of where the magic of diagonalization comes in, which is if you knew that this was a diagonalization, then this matrix M is actually equal to the diagonal matrix. So IE, the map is given by a diagonal matrix. So this matrix M, which is relative to our two bases, actually is the matrix D in terms of this factorization. And let me do a proof of this, but I, I will do a proof of this in a second. I think I'll actually leave it to the next part here. Uh, but so this is kind of why we did all this setup because we wanted to look at this nice case right here. And in, in a second, I'll work out all the details of the proof and kind of try to finish off by giving you some of the big ideas.